What up data nerds, I'm Luke and welcome to my channel where I make data visualization easy. In this video today, we're gonna to be talking about the basic objects within Python. So Python itself is an object-oriented programming language. And so therefore I wanna focus on the basics before we sort of expand into other higher end topics within Python. So for this, we're gonna be focusing on three main objects. The first one for being expressions, where we're gonna be looking at things like integers, lists, dictionaries. From there, we're gonna move into variables. So how can we assign these expressions to certain variable names? And then thirdly, we're gonna be looking at functions. So mainly built-in functions within the Python standard library, uh, things like the print statement, how you print to the console. So once we get done covering those three basic types of objects, we're gonna then move into doing some practice problems that will reinforce what we learned today. So with that, let's jump right into the computer. So here we are in VS Code and we have a Jupyter Notebook running. And if you're not sure how to use this, I have another tutorial series that I'll include a link up above that you can follow along to get these things installed and up and running. But from here, let's go over a basic introduction to Python for un actually understanding what it's used for. So Python is an object-oriented programming language. And what that means is an object is a collection of data and methods that operate on that data. So for normal people like you and me, what does that mean? That means, well, that just means that one thing usually lives inside of another thing. And we're gonna show that with the objects that we're gonna get to today. For the first expression, let's look at numbers. So, and if you're unfamiliar with uh, Jupyter Notebooks, this is just where we can actually run our code so I can type in certain things. So I'm gonna type in a number, so let's say nine, and I press shift enter and I can evaluate it. So it sees it as uh, nine. And this is just uh, something we'll cover later as functions, but we can see that the type of nine, if we press shift enter, it is an integer. Um, we can also do things such as floats. So if I do 9.5, uh, we can type in decimals as well. One thing to note real quick is that this uh, portion right here after the pound sign in this Jupyter Notebook is uh, comment. So it is commented out and it's not read by the interpreter itself. So anything after this pound sign um, will be highlighted in green in VS Code to basically tell you, hey, it's not gonna be read by the Python interpreter. Next is strings. Strings are, we can either have them in single quotes as shown here. We can also have them in double quotes as shown here. Um, and either one, you can also have things like emojis in it. And then say you wanted to have a multi-line string, you could use a triple double quotes, if you will, and it will encapsulate all of it as a string. And we can see when we press shift enter that it's um, capturing that it's one long string and then this uh, backslash N is saying, hey, there's new lines in here. The next item is Boolean values. So typical Boolean values of true. Um, or false. Um, both of these are case sensitive, so make sure you have that first letter capitalized. Next is lists, and lists are characterized by these square brackets, and then you can have anything, any type of expression that we talked about above, so numbers, integers, um, you can even have follow-on things that we'll talk about, dictionaries, but they're all contained within here, and uh, sort of a special feature of lists is that a list is mutable, so we can change it. If I wanted to add and remove from this list, I can, and that will come into play uh, later on. The next item is a tuple, and this is enclosed within parentheses, and it, it, it looks similar to a list. Same thing, it can hold anything that you want inside of it, such as integers, uh, floats. And the one thing that it differs from list is list we talked about were mutable, so we could change them. Tuples are immutable, so once I make this tuple and I have added all the items that I wanted to it, I can't add or remove items from this. For sets, they are enclosed within curly braces and they look similar to lists as well. And so what I've typed here, if you notice, I have some repeating ones inside of here. Sets are pretty unique because whenever I press shift enter, 
what will happen is one, it, this is an unordered list, uh, sets maintain an unordered. So as you can see, the order I put it in here is not the same order that it came out. Also, it only allows you to have one an item that is unique to occur once. So the ones in this case are repeating. It will trim it down and it will only allow you to have one. For dictionaries, they also have a curly brace uh, similar to tuples, but they're different in the fact that what we have is we have key and value pairs. So in this case, Dwight is the key and the value is the number after it. The keys typically are, can be strings or integers or whatever, whatever expression you wanna use here. And then similar here after the colon itself, it can be any type of expression as well, uh, even another dictionary if you want it inside of it. But this is what we refer to as a key and then value pair. And we can access this later on within it. We could access the PAM with inside of this dictionary if we wanted to. Moving on to variables. Variables are containers for storing expressions. And down here at the bottom, we can see that what you want to assign, so the variable itself, you, you put it on the left, and then the item that is going to be uh, stored inside of that variable is gonna be located on the right-hand side of that equal sign. The naming convention, we have some naming conventions for this. Uh, first, it must start with a letter, must be alphanumeric or underscores, and it is case sensitive. So a capital X in this case wouldn't be recognized. Let's go through some example naming real quick. So let's assign a variable. Um, for this, we can see, hey, we're using letters, numbers, and underscores only, and we're gonna assign it. So I'll press shift enter, and now six is in, uh, assigned inside of episodes of season one. So if I came down here and I type a episode season one, press shift enter, it will display six because this is assigned to this variable now. So for variables, they're not just limited to integers or floats or Boolean expressions. You can also assign things such as lists, tuples, or even dictionaries to a variable. For our third and final object, let's look at functions now. We're gonna next look at, so we're gonna look for this uh, operators. So let's look at a simple example. So if we had five, uh, so if we had five plus uh, four times two and press shift enter. We can see, hey, this is gonna be 13 because we do four times two inside the parentheses and then we add it to five. Now let's say that we had uh, five uh, minus uh, four divided by two and press enter. What we see is that Python uses the order of operations. So in this case, we're gonna do the four divided by two first. In this, uh, so four divided by two is two, and then five minus the two is gonna give us the three. I wanted to call out real quickly that you're not just limited to just the plus minus uh, with Python itself, but we can also do floor division. So if we did a double uh, backslash, we can see that uh, five divided by two, two actually goes into five, uh, two times evenly, so we expect two to be displayed for this. Uh, we can do modulus, so what is the remainder once we do five divided by two? So obviously five uh, minus four, we'd expect to be one. And then you can do an exponential as well, so five squared. And analyzing all these, we can see, yep, uh, the two, one, and the 25. For the next function, uh, let's look at methods. So let's go back to our previous example where we had that mail cast variable where it was a list. And say we wanted to add Kevin to this list. How would we go about adding this? So mail cast is, a, like I said, it's a list and there's certain methods that are available to it. So if I type in mail cast specific to VS Code, I can, I can get all those different methods in this little pop-up right here, which I think is a really convenient feature. But from here, I can access those by just appending it. I just do this mail cast period, and then type the code of append, and then you put in your parentheses uh, what I wanna add. So I wanna add Kevin. Now when I press uh, shift enter, it is now added Kevin to that list. And if I went to uh, actually show mail cast, I will see Kevin got added to this list because we used uh, the method append. Just to show another example with methods, 
So we have our, once again, we have our Aegis Cast, which is a dictionary, which has the names as the keys and then the value as the age itself. So if we wanted to say, I wanted to get the different keys uh, from this dictionary, I would just go in and type Aegis Cast and then from there type in keys. And then I remember I have to put this in uh, put those parentheses at the end, even if there's nothing to put inside of it. And then pressing shift enter, it will return the keys from this dictionary. For the next function, let's look at built in functions. So there's certain things, uh, if I wanted to run a function, think of it similar to a method, you'd put it inside of parentheses, um, but we have access to it directly. So there's no period required prior to this. So say I wanted to get the absolute value of a value. So negative one in this case, I could do ABS, which is the absolute value function and run it and I'll get one as expected. Um, another popular built-in function for debugging would be print. So I could uh, print the mail cast and we could see it right here. I could also go in and do another built-in function such as if I wanted to know the type of something. So type of female cast, I press enter and we can see that it is a tuple. These are all different built-in functions that you have available immediately uh, within the Python standard, standard library. The next function to look at is imported functions. So let's say um, math is part of Python standard library, but I wanted to, I needed to use it some more sophisticated features. You can import the math module. And so now because of this, we've imported math and we can now use math. So if I type math dot, we can get all the different things that's, that are available. And for this, I want, I want to do a, the square root. So let's take the square root of four and we press uh, shift enter and we can see, hey, the square root of four is two. And so just to see, like, um, just to prove, right, this is the type of math, we can see that, hey, it is a module. Um, we could also, some other helpful features that you should take advantage of is uh, the help built-in function. We can type help math, press shift enter, and then the help uh, feature of math will pop up and will tell you a lot of different information about the different features and modules uh, within uh, this module. Okay, so we covered expressions, variables, and functions. Now let's put what we just learned to the test and do some data analysis with uh, some examples that I'll give you. Let's use this list that's uh, right here inside of this Python notebook. And what this is, is a list of actors. And it's actually from the first few scenes of the first episode. And it, as they have lines, uh, this says um, the name of the actor that has a line. So there's a bunch of names in here. So you could imagine, especially with it getting even bigger than this, it'd be a pain to analyze this by hand. Much better for Python to go in and use uh, the Python uh, libraries to actually analyze this. So let's say we have the task of understanding what percentage of the lines uh, for this uh, first few scenes does Michael have or Michael appear in. So let's start by analyzing it. Feel free to pause right now and try it on your own or let's follow along and let's just go through it. So for my thought process, I want to know, I'm gonna put a comment here. I want to know first uh, how many times Michael appears. Uh, and then from there, I wanna know two, um, how many total items are in the list. And then three, I uh, want to divide these two values to get the percentage. So pretty simple, right? So let's do the first one. So how many times does Michael appear in this list? And we named it uh, actors. I'll just run it to make sure it's run. So if we go actors, then we need something to count how many times something appears in this. And we can see here in the pop-up uh, that count pops up. So I can do count um, and we'll put in Michael. And we do a shift enter. Oh, and we get that it's, hey, 38. Um, okay, so now we know how many times Michael appears. We need to know how many total items are in the list itself. 
we can use a actual built-in function within uh, Python. So we'll do length, so L-E-N, and we'll type in actors, and we press shift enter, and we get 82. And looking up at it, it's like, okay, that looks like 82. And with Python, it's very much about not repeating yourself. So let's assign these to variables. Okay, so we've assigned these to variables. Let's go through and actually divide it now and get what the percentage is. Okay, and then we, when we print it, we can see, hey, Michael appears about 46% of the time, and this, this looks about right with the previous numbers that we saw. So we've answered the first question of, what percentage does Michael appear in the first few scenes? For the next example, let's look at what is the average age of the cast. And for this, we're gonna be using a dictionary here. And the keys is the, are the names themselves, and then the values are the ages that uh, appear for each character. And just fun fact, this is the, the ages they had on the first season uh, of The Office. So like usual, let's look at what type of approach we're gonna take for this. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna get uh, get the ages only. I need to extract this from the dictionary because the names don't really help in this matter. So I want to get, get the ages only. Uh, from there, I want to um, sum up all the ages. And from there, divide the sum um, by the count of the ages. So how many ages actually appear. And yeah, so there's many ways to do this, but let's, uh, we're gonna use this approach for it. So remember previously we used a method uh, of, a, of dictionaries to get the keys. We can also use a similar method to get the values. So if I do ages cast.values and run shift enter, I can get, uh, oops, I need to run this and run this again. So if I, uh, run this and get the values. I can see these different values available, but this is dictionary values and it's sort of, it's hard to work with. I want to make this into a list. And so it's actually quite easy. I would just, uh, I could assign this a variable and then put it into a thing, but I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do, hey, make this a list. And I'll put this all within its own enclosing parentheses, press shift enter. And so now we have all of the ages in a list and I'll assign this to a variable, so ages. And shift enter. Okay, now we want to sum up all of the ages. So Python has a built-in function called sum and from there we can put the ages list inside of it and we'll get a sum of all the different ages. So I'll, I'll assign this to a variable of sum ages. And then similarly as the sum, we can also do a, uh, we did length before, right? Uh, we can do length of ages, uh, do shift enter. We can see there's 11 items, do a double check. Yep, about 11 items. And I can assign this to length ages. Shift enter, and then yeah, we just have to do, because we're trying to find what is the average age of the cast. So we do average age equal to sum of the ages divided by length of the ages. And then we wanna print this out, so I'll just type this again and press shift enter. And then yeah, we print it out. See, the average age of the cast on season one was about 37.5. Bam, there you have it. We covered the three basic types of objects, so variables, expressions, and functions. In the next episode, we're gonna be going into how to use loops and also looking at if statements. So we'll be combining that and building on a lot of what we learned in this episode in the next episode. If you're new here, I'm Luke, and welcome to my channel, Data Visualization by Luke. I try to make data analysis as easy as possible for people to understand. So if you found this video useful, smash that like button. Also consider subscribing if you find this tutorial series interesting. And with that, we'll see you in the next one.